Alright, hello again. Uh, let's get going with another tutorial on uh, using Puppy Ray for rendering endless landscapes. Well, not really endless. Uh, as you can see, it's going pretty far. It is actually tiling the basic patch of terrain. And uh, here the fog is essentially where it's ending. And you can adjust the distance of that fog, but we did not let it go often enough to, to show a repetitive pattern. I suppose we could make that so. But what I want to do in this tutorial really is to cover a few basics for the coloring. Uh, in particular, when you look at this scene, it's still being rendered, and I will probably abort it. Um, it's a test render. Uh, there are some things that help here. The sun is somewhere up there. You see some bright highlights over the waves. The waves are pretty pretty strong, pretty highly pronounced. We'll see uh, what we need to do to make that happen. There's actually a couple of parameters uh, relative to the water plane. Uh, breakers, uh, multi-frequency, uh, I guess the space is uh, on the wrong side of the words here. Uh, multi-frequency, uh, refraction, that's to make it transparent and refractive. Um, but how do we get that coloring showing in the waves? How is that ground floor, the ocean floor, how is that um, ground level showing different coloration? It's not automatic. It's something you have to arrange. You have to be aware of, well, how do you get it also above the water? Like this terrain coloration here, where does that come from? Right, we have the terrain elevation, that's one thing. And you see this image here on the right side, that's essentially an elevation map that dictates where is it going up and where is it going down. And then there is another map, the texture map, that's this one here on the left side. Um, that one is indicating, well, what color is spread all over that terrain. So let me go and stop this rendering. And uh, get out of this, and then we can enjoy the short part of the rendering we've done so far. All right, and uh, really what I want to do is focus on um, the very basic elements to make the coloration, make the elevation in the first place. If you've never created an elevation map, this will be your first intro perhaps for that. How to create the elevation map, how to create the color map, and there are many ways. You can paint it yourself, but there's a couple of shortcuts we can take here. And then how to put that into a single scene and render it, or even into an animation. So this may be a multi-part tutorial sequence. Uh, it's somewhat similar to uh, what you may have seen in the River Canyon tutorials that were for 3D Designer. Uh, back in the days of uh, Howler 9.5, uh, we had, have, uh, uh, had a lot of fascination and excitement about uh, some of the, the tools we got there. And we're going to use some of them too. Um, let's see, no, not now. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is uh, start from scratch, uh, almost actually. Uh, here is an elevation map, it already has erosions. Let's see another one, this one here. All right. So how do we get something like this? How do we get the, the basic uh, dark areas and the bright areas? And then also how do you get the erosion? Because that's what those little grayish wormy things are. Those are where it's going darker and therefore will be lower and those are the, the canyons or the, the creeks and the erosion, the eroded part. So we start initially with something um, li like a, a render filter here, like the plasma noise, very popular for that. Uh, and we might uh, initially have it in opaque mode. Um, let's leave it at that, but let's make it seamless. Although it might not be seamless enough, we might still need to do some more seamlessness. <laughs> um, but this is a good start, and uh, let's okay that. Now, you might adjust the scale a little bit if you want them a little bit tighter peaks and you know, more rough terrain or really big, wide features. So um, let's, go, let's go with something like this. Seven, seamless, okay that. Now I'm going to expand the dynamic range because we have some areas that are dark, but they're not the darkest possible. And I'd like to keep everything in a very dark range, going to a very bright range as well. So some of the peaks here, the bright parts, they may be bright, but maybe not fully white. And I want the dynamic range to be expanded from the image menu so that it's going to do that. Now I'm not going to do that across the animation. In fact, you know what? I'm going to clear the animation, free it, so we're dealing with just one image right now. I can close this timeline editor. And <coughs> so here is the uh, elevation map so far. The next thing I'm going to do is go do the same thing. And that's because there is a 
technique or a trick that will give us some nice little features, extra ridges and features on that terrain. So I'm going to go back to the plasma noise in the render category. And this time I'm going to change the mode to less than. And you'll see some areas, if you perhaps uh, click it, you'll see uh, new ones. You'll see some areas with some, some nice little light uh, ridges, like this one here or something like this here or this here and that can look like a re that, could, that can look really interesting as an elevation map so we're going to use that and and then once again perhaps expand the dynamic range and now let's say if you want to do something that looks a bit more like um, I don't know like a Grand Canyon or a Canyon Lands where you have a couple of generations of three four five different levels of generations in uh, sediments uh, at different altitudes one thing you could do for that is adjust with the curves and say rather than having a linear spread let's keep it plateauing at the top and then drop suddenly and then plateau again for a little while at about the same level and then drop again and do that a few times and so then now you have some areas that are very bright like these guys here and those will be the highest parts the highest uh, peaks and then it goes into a light gray and then it goes into a medium gray, into a dark gray, into two black, possibly or very dark. Uh, so that's that's a good way to create that sort of effect. Uh, I'm not sure if you can already visual visualize it, but that's a sort of the technique for Grand Canyon style scenery. Um, and then maybe also a little bit of uh, sediments, um, you know, along the cliffs or the, the steep hills, we might want to uh, blur that, not really blur it, but do a light diffusion. Uh, let me zoom in first so we can really get a good idea of what that looks like. See how it's all bright here? That's all the same brightness, so it'll be a flat top. And then it suddenly drops down to the next level of, of gray. And what we'd like to do is have at the bottom of this kind of a little easing into it. So that's something you can do with the uh, photographic light diffusion filter. And uh, by doing so, you'll see a little bit of a halo. It almost looks like a little uh, glow effect, right? Because this part is the mid-gray it eventually goes down to. But here we are on the light gray. And here we have a transition zone. And you can adjust the radius here, which changes that transition radius, transition distance. And so that's a good way to, to get a little bit of a, uh, um, an angular slope. Uh, getting into that uh, steep sudden increase in the brightness which will translate into a sudden increase in the elevation once we put that into the elevation map so <coughs> here we have a, a good starting point now we don't have erosion yet and there's a couple of different ways to create erosion for that let me take a snapshot of this image we'll probably need this uh, at some point I'm going to close some of the others. Uh, quick look at this one. This one is a snapshot of an erosion map. And so I'm going to show you how to create that. There's at least two different ways. One is you actually take this elevation map into 3D Designer, where we have integrated, uh, back in version 9.5, we had integrated the erosion. Right? Remember here on the 3D Designer, you could go there. And uh, here it is. Here's our canyon lens. Uh, you can adjust a little bit how high it goes. You can adjust which way the light is shining, but that's really just going to be temporary. We don't need it really. Um, it just helps a little bit, but we will mostly need the elevation map to be eroded. So let me get a little bit of soft shadows, uh, make the light go sideways and uh, change it, something like this. Uh, add a little bit more brightness to the other light. So we have, we have a, a nice terrain here. Let's add some erosion to that. Uh, perhaps zoom in a little bit or getting closer. So to do the erosion in 3D Designer, we have um, the More button and we have Erosion. And we also have another thing which is called Sediments. So those are both very interesting to use. So let's do Erosion. I'll just click somewhere here and I'll move it and calculate. And you know, you'll see some, some gullies and some formation of erosion creeks and if you want more of them just by all means increase the rainfall maybe to 70 or 50 or something like that it will take some extra time recalculate that uh, if you want less of the pre-filtering it'll be a little bit crisper and if you want if you don't want those bump those potholes here at the top we call that the flatness uh, the flatness threshold if you give that let's say five it's already a little bit better if you give it uh, 22 
uh, it will it will just uh, keep it flat and then there's still erosion happening on the sides now there's also sediments and we can add some sediments here you can see how along the flanks particularly here uh, there, are, there are here at the bottom as well there's some sediment starting to deposit as you increase this and you can also in decrease the amount here of the the fill up so so you essentially can adjust that and this all has to translate into some sort of an elevation map that you can actually retain you can store this one here this is the store height map when you do that you keep the height map of the terrain uh, that has been modified by those erosions and by the sediments all right so let's go do that store height map now there is one more thing we might want to do and that's to actually apply a color map as well coloration that's based on elevation and also based on the slope uh, we do that here create texture and when we do that you have the upper area that one by default is white such as for snow and the bottom part is green and that might be typically for grass uh, at the bottom of the valley we might want to change that when we go colorize this for a scene that's going to be partly on the water right the bottom part shouldn't be a light green it should be more like a dark bluish green that way it will better mimic what you might see through the water as you start looking into the deeper parts of the ocean so <coughs> uh, that's one thing we do here we'll change the color to something like uh, maybe a bluish teal and a little bit darker right and you may not see it too well here so maybe increase this a little bit so you really can see up there is some dark green here maybe that's too much on the blue let's go change it perhaps a little bit more like this but to keep it dark that's really one of the things to do here then the other thing is you have the gray for the steep rocks and then the snow cap and we're going to change the role here the caps that are snow well unless the the scene has some snow uh, like this one doesn't so if the scene had snow well we would probably need to keep some of that but what we want to do in this case is say you know what the upper area may have some green so instead of white snow it'll be some light green maybe some some uh, grass uh, fields um, or maybe some uh, some sort of a rocky appearance you know it could actually we call it snow here but maybe we'll say no you're gonna be the rock and then the the sides that are uh, closer to the the bottom where the, the ocean is that water region that's where the sandy beaches are going to have to show so the middle zone here that's where we're going to get some sort of a sandy beach color something like this perhaps and um that's uh now now of course we may not want it we may want it just here where it's close to the green but then up here on these slopes we may not want that so you may need to bring the the whites down well which are not really white that's the the, the light gray now um, but you could also um, do a couple of other things adjust the smoothing a little bit perhaps uh, keep it very low adjust the intensity and see if that there you go see it's it's like it's taking over and so you get to control a very distinct ro uh, region where we do have some some sandy beach gray or, or brownish appearance and then the rest is dark green for the parts that will be underwater and light gray for the parts that will be uh, above the water and significantly far away from the water typically uh, you know the mountains and the hills and so on so so that's sort of the idea behind that now that's not the only way to do this uh, the thing is that this color map will go into the swap image we see here it actually chose it for us the swap image um, and we can store it too we can say store texture uh, but it's not really necessary if i cancel out of this now i did store the height map and i did also and that's the one with the erosion but i also have this one here um, so i had the this one here before erosion then i had this one with erosion and you can see the gullies and the river creeks and all that erosion phenomenon and and then i have this one here that's the uh, elevation map the color map right so now that's actually also in the swap image if i click here as for the swap i can see it in the swap image all right so i'm going to use that to do my my rendering in puppy ray let's do a quick test and then i'll go back and show you the other method uh, let's go do a quick test in puppy ray here transform 
puppy ray, let's use the GPU version. And of course it remembers the most recent rendering. Ba ma make sure, by the way, whenever you go back to, um, to puppy ray, it still has the renderings of your last pass, your last rendering, all the settings. And if that was a very high quality, high end final render, it will take forever to re-render that if you accidentally move any slider or value or option that causes it to re-render automatically. So be very careful and the first thing you should do when you go back in there, if this is a rendering you don't need anymore and these settings can change, first thing you'll do is change it to a really low quality so that it doesn't take much time to do this and if you made a mistake in any settings it won't cost you much time. So now I'm going to go to medium quality, we have the water. Um, I need perhaps a little bit better quality to really see what's going on. Let's go to high quality. So there is some refraction going on here. Let's do without refraction first and do a quick notch here so we see it re-render. Um, let's go and, uh, you know, normally uh, it would be, the interface would be like this. We don't have it all open, but I'm going to go into uh, first, uh, in fact, keep it that way and change my view a little bit so that I can go and see perhaps some particular areas of interest. Maybe zoom in a little bit here and uh, change my angle this way. There you go. You notice that uh, stratification or these different layers, that's what we got for this, uh, you know, mimicking the Grand Canyon or Canyon Lands approach here, where we have sort of a staircasing of major uh, regions or, or elevation levels. Um, all right, so. Um, if we go and uh, do a high quality render, we see it's mostly this light gray. There should be an area where it's a brownish and that's the beaches that we wanted to, con uh, to capture. And then it should eventually go down to the dark green. Now we will not see the dark green or the beaches underneath here unless it is transparent uh, and refractive. So we want to make sure we turn that on, do another render and now we start seeing some coloring here. Maybe the water is too high, maybe we need to go a little bit lower so that we actually see some of the, the sandy beaches appear above the water too. So to do that, I'm going to change the color, uh, the, the quality of the render so I can dynamically change this quickly. Now I cannot adjust the height of the water. That one is fixed, right? The elevation map goes from 0 to 255. It's an 8-bit value. So at the middle of that, at 128 or 127, somewhere around there, that's where the water is and you don't get to change that. What you do get to change is the camera position. You can go up and down on the camera. That's this button here with the right button. You move down under or above the, the whole scene. That's the camera position. And another thing you can also change is the, the world. This one here, move the world. Again, with the right button, you can move the world and it moves against the water. So the water is wherever it is at the middle of this and you, you can see more of the world by moving it up above the water. Right, now I'm going to disable the refraction and change it a little bit more and perhaps even disable the waves here, the frequency down to zero so it should be a flat, flat perfect mirror and, and so that, that way you have a good way to kind of gauge where, how much of that sandy beach uh, brownish appearance will you actually get. Uh, now it may not be a perfect uh, estimate because when you change the quality it may give you a little bit less or a little bit more of that. So if you go to high quality to test it, maybe you get to see what you want. Then you can probably bring back the frequency on the, the water, on the waves, like 0 point, what was it, 2 or something like that. Uh, and change maybe the angle so you can look in different angles, different directions and you get to see some of the brown that we placed in the color map or the texture map and you see the gray, mostly grayish uh, appearance of the rocks. There's one more thing I did here too, you see a, a lot of little details like shady bump maps. And that's this part, it's the riverbed. If you don't, initially it's uh, none of that so it would be essentially a, a very smooth appearance, something like that. Right? And you can even make it smoother by increasing the pre-filter um, which will really, really uh, strongly smooth it. That's a great way to do it if you if you want to make it look more like sand dunes or, or you know sand rock or something like that, sandstone. Uh, but then on top of that, you can also go and add some rocky or fractal appearance, and that will add a tremendous amount of uh, additional detail. I I like the rocky the most for this. Uh, or uh, second most perhaps, and the, the other one that's really great too is the riverbed.
Right, that's a really great mix of several types of bumps and disruptions there. Um, so let's see what else. Um, you know, we, we've covered the very basics here. We can go and uh, perhaps uh, change the, the sky color. Because right now, um, let's see what, what's the sky color. See, the moment you change it, it reflects. It changes the whole appearance of the scene here. So let's go and look up at the sky. Uh, I'm actually looking at the sun here. What's in the sky? Not a whole lot of detail here. Let's go to the reddish. There you go. There's some some sky, some dark blue, white alteration. Uh, I need to zoom out, I guess, to see a bit more of that. There you go. Um, there's some sky like these guys. There you go. All right, so there's a lot of things there to change in what's happening above, and not just the portion that you'll see, but also how much light it's it's uh, contributing to the scene when you enable this global illumination. Right, without it, it's a much darker scene. Then the only light you have there is from the light source. So the color of the light source will have an impact, the intensity of it, uh, how close it is to the scene. Right, that distance of the light will significantly change the brightness of the scene, but only those parts that are actually illuminated by it. The parts that are dark here are not getting much light. You might get a reflection of a wall nearby that's very bright and lighten that up a little bit. Uh, I think we do that uh, up to one level or something like that. But to the most, for the most part, if you want some more realistic lighting, what you do need is to enable the global illumination. Now this is too much of it, so reduce that intensity perhaps down to 0.5 or 0.6. Uh, reduce the intensity of the, the sunlight as well. Uh, and again, if you, if you want actually the sun to be in the scene, go look for it or move the sun into the direction of where you're, you know, you're pointing the camera. Uh, let's say I want the sun to be a little bit lower here and I might see longer shadows. Um, I'm gonna select the light and with the right button, move it down and perhaps really move it down quite a bit. Uh, and you know, you see it's getting a little bit hazy here. It's not getting much of that direct light anymore. If I want these parts to show a bit more reflection still, like if it's wet, I can go to the world and adjust the specularity and the hardness of that. So if I give it a, zero, a really small value for the hardness, like 0.2, uh, you'll see perhaps more specularity. It's actually not very highly specular, so I need to give it more intensity on that as well. There you go. Now you're starting to see some reflection specular highlights. Uh, something like 8 on specularity or 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, 0 0 uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Uh, that's, those are good values for uh, making it look a bit more like a wet surface with uh, a lot of specular highlight happening here. Uh, one thing we should also do is change the color of the light. It's not red enough. Let's go a little bit more sunsetish here and change that. Uh, perhaps it's too big. Let's go back to the render settings. There is a sun size here. Let's give it uh, 77. And there you go. Uh, we can also, uh, let's go to a slightly faster mode and move the light source. So select the light here, move the light, and then with the left button you can move it one way or another. Um, it's a bit difficult to say where it is. It's not back there. You know, that's a projection of where it would be if it were in the back there. But the light source is actually a point light, so you can have it nearby and uh, kind of fool you there. You want to really move it far away if you want to make it look like it's really uh, casting the shadows, not from just above. Because right now here, I'm, I'm placing it in the scene. Right? So that's, that's a different, uh, different location. Um, what I should probably do is move it a little bit until it's far enough where I may, might even need to increase the brightness of it a little bit. So here's the brightness. And now you see the light on the flanks here getting a little bit brighter. And uh, let's see what else. Um, let's go to a, a well, kind of a semi-final render, high quality. Let's talk about the rendering at the final settings. Right? We have perhaps some transparency or some multi-frequency and refraction. Let's see what that looks like. We actually don't see much of the light here. Let me go temporarily to a lesser quality so I can move down. Yeah, I want to see some of that water here for this test render. 
So let's go render high quality. And so some of the parameters, as you change them, it triggers immediately a re-render. Some of them do not. And I'm not sure exactly why or why not. But here I might want to say ray step. That's for finer detail. If I increase it, it's going to be very coarse. You're not going to see a whole lot of detail from the terrain. You're still going to see probably some of the bumpiness. But uh, if, you, if you go down to lower detail, then the ray step, you know, at the really small, then you start seeing more refined details on those creeks and the erosion. And um, let's see, what else do we want to change? Oh, yeah, the number of anti-aliasing steps, right? If you have it just at one, uh, you can f still f quite interactively use this. And, of course, all that depends on how fast your GPU is. Uh, I have a fairly old system here, six years old, and only about uh, 70 or 80 CUDA cores. So it's, a, it's, it's quite a, a sluggish system at that. But uh, your experience, you might, you might have a card that's three years old and already have three or 400 cores. Um, and of course, the very high-end graphic cards now have 2,000, almost 3,000 cores. Um, so it's going to be uh, real time at uh, nearly final render there. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm going to go to set my rendering here. Final render, go do it. Right. So at this time, you see it's actually rendering again and again and again, and it's gradually getting to that final image. It's going to do this one here is going to do a total of 36 frames. Now it's not updating everything all the time. Sometimes it says, "Okay, I don't have time to do it. Well, let me just focus on doing it." And then once you have the feedback uh, again, here you see the, the the button is highlighting. That means it's done. Right. Now, this rendering, I only did 35 passes. That's a fairly high number, but you could go much higher. You could go to 100, even 200, and at times you will see even more fascinating colors. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is change this to not have the multi-frequency and no breakers, and then I'm going to make the frequency of the main waves a little bit uh, higher, so they are a little bit closer together. It's going to be smaller waves. So I'm going to say, let's say, 0.5. Uh, and then here, the noise frequency, I'm going to make it uh, pretty small, let's say 003, something like that. Let's do one without global illumination. Uncheck this. I think this one will cause the re-render. Yep, there it is. So the only place where you see light ha hitting it now is from the sunlight. The, the global sky illumination is not happening at the moment. But you can see how beautiful this, this, this transparent water looks now here. And if you give it more rendering passes, it's going to look even better. Right, so if I, if I were to change this, let's say the first digit at 35 here to 3, if I change this to 70, that often will cause a new render. Sometimes it's not, and you may need to do something else. But be careful, if that's a 200, you're going to have to wait for 200 passes of rendering. Anyway, I'm uh, pretty much done here with the basics. I wanted to show you one more way to actually generate that erosion. So as soon as this one's done, I'm going to call this image. Uh, there it is. So I'm done with that, and I'm going to take a sn snapshot. And you should also save that to to a file. Uh, you know, here's another image that I rendered earlier, and uh, you can see here it's got uh, some nice refre reflection of uh, the the terrain um, on the water. A bit dispersion with that, but it also shows transparency, and you can tell, uh, you get a hint of the underwater scenery. Uh, you can see some waves also, some horizontal wave patterns there a little bit. So uh, that's really what you get by working on those colors. You see how we got some green patches there, and there's more of that in the lower elevation, which uh, stays on the water. All right. So now let's go back to actually final look here. How do we make this texture map with the erosion another way to do that? Let's start with this one that didn't have the erosion yet. Um, instead of going to the 3D designer, which is here, Transform 3D Designer. Instead of doing that and finding the erosion option in the 3D Designer, what we'll do next time is, or this time actually, is if we go to the Stylize option. Because there you also have two options of very uh, interest. Uh, one of them is the uh, slope shading. That's where you can change what the colors are based on the slope and the elevation actually. And then the erosion. So let's do both. Let's do the erosion first. And it calculates an erosion map, and uh, we're not going to be picky. We'll just accept it. So here's an erosion map. What is that? Well, that's something we need to subtract from the terrain, from the original elevation map, right? It came from the height map, 
this one here, and it calculated which way water would flow and erose it, you know, cut it out or carve it, and it found that's a good representation for it. We need to now subtract this erosion map from the original height map. So what I'll do is I'll, st I'll take a snapshot of this, I'll store this right here, shortcut to store image, and I'll say this one needs to be subtracted from the original, right? And so uh, I'm going to load the original, and then in that stored copy here with the erosion map, there's a little pull-down menu, and you can go to Combine, and say Combine it how? By subtracting it. And voila, we now have subtracted the erosion. But this is a very strong subtraction. It's probably way too strong. So one thing I'm going to do is do an interactive undo here and say, you know, I, I don't want to leave it without erosion, but I also don't want to have too much of it. So I'm going to go a little bit somewhere in between here. Another thing you could do before, or perhaps after that even, is to go back to this image and uh, perhaps blur it a little bit. So you get a little bit more of a widening of these fine details. And that gives you a, a slightly different appearance on that erosion map or that height map once you apply it. So again, there's uh, many different ways you can now work with this image and with this one and combine it in different ways. Uh, the, the key is to remember that you can go to one image here that's stored and uh, divide it, screen it, greater than, less than, do all sorts of operations. The most natural one would be to carve away, meaning cut it away, meaning subtract it. Right? And then simply use this part here to adjust how much of that erosion you actually want to see happening. All right, so that's our uh, eroded elevation map. Let's take a snapshot of that. And then let's take a look at the coloration, right? So that was how to create something similar to this where the elevation controls what color we get for it. So uh, I'm gonna go to that uh, stored version that has the, um, the erosion gullies and the creeks. And I'm gonna go back to that filter same filter under the stylized category, we now have a slope shading also. That dates back to five, uh, 9.5 or 9.6, somewhere around there. And so it's very similar to what you see with applying the texture in the 3D designer, where you have a grass, a rock, and a snow. The interface layout is a little bit different, but the concept is very much the same. And you have a color at the bottom, you have a color at the top for the snow, and you have whatever the rock is in between. And so we can we get to change that again. We could say, you know what, for the gray, we'll take that sandy beach color. Let's give it a bit more of a brownish light something like this. And then the green part is going to be the, the seaweeds and the algae and you know all the, at the bottom of the ocean floor. So that's where we want to change that perhaps to be a little bit more on the bluish side. Uh, something like this. Pretty dark potentially, but definitely a bit more saturated too. Something like that. Okay, and then whatever used to be snow and it was white here, uh, well, we could keep it white if we wanted some snow there, but we could also give it something a little bit different. And we can also do the smoothing here, uh, work with that to give it a slightly different appearance. Um, so let's say maybe 66, we'll play with these numbers to see if you like something better. Uh, but most importantly, we want to have where was it? Something like this. I, w I want to give it a different color, right? We have the sandy beach, uh, light brown. Maybe the rocks or the mountains are going to be dark brown. So let's not keep it white, not snow, but rather something like this, kind of a brown, uh, a bit rocky gray appearance. And so now we have um, pretty nice, pretty nice mix of coloration. If we want more of it to be underwater, we'll probably um, bring this uh, green part up higher and uh, and then that will dictate where we'll put the water plane. Right? Now we have a few other options here. We have sample radius. Play with those to see if you have something you like better. Uh, there are a couple of other types of uh, colorations you can generate with that. Uh, there's also a shading option that adds a lot of uh, interesting, intriguing details. And I would actually use that because it's essentially adding different color based on that elevation map itself, right? We have an elevation map that has those carved uh, canyons and river creeks and so on, the gullies. Well, in those, we might actually want to change the shading or the coloration to make it look like there is maybe some vegetation that's rotting in there at the middle of those canyons. And that's exactly what's going to make it look even more interesting. All right, so I'm going to keep that, uh, perhaps fiddle with this one more 
there you go and so that's our color map let's go take a snapshot of that too always take snapshots and you know if you're not sure if you're going to crash or lose it or lose the power on your batteries uh, be sure to save this to a file it's only in ram here it's not safe uh, but at any rate we have uh, this place where we'll put the texture map go back to the main image and load the elevation map so we now have the two we have the texture map here and the elevation map and none of these are seamless anymore so we probably should make those seamless right, at this point I'm going to say uh, for the elevation map go to image make seamless and just remember the numbers or keep them default that's an 8 by 8 and then go to the swap image and do the same thing make this one seamless as well make seamless same parameters so you now have a corresponding um, you know discoloration feature at the same place as where this darkness feature is and this bright area here if I toggle back and forth you'll see them correspond and lined up that's the key thing is that they need to be lined up so if you zoom in here and you look at uh, for instance this river going down here uh, you want to recognize that one also in the color map even if it's a little bit off or different or whatnot now you can do a lot of more things to that right you can add all sorts of bumpiness and color changes and other things uh, that's not the focus on this tutorial it's already way longer than I thought it should be uh, so let's keep it to the final render um, we're going to minimize pretty much all of these resources don't need them for now uh, what I'll do is I'll create an animation a placeholder for the animation and uh, then we'll render the animation into that right so we have the texture map we have the height map and I'm gonna keep it a little bit to the right side here you notice my sidebar is minimized I can open it like this but there's a little vertical uh, thing here to turn it to the side so I have more space for my image and then I'm gonna go and create an animation and that animation is going to be, let's say I'm going to make it uh, 6 seconds long, so 180 because I want 30 frames per second. That That's going to take a while to render, no doubt about it. Um, and so I'm going to go to Filter, Transform, Puppy Ray this time, and that's the GPU version of course. And again, don't forget to change the quality first before anything else, so you don't have to accidentally wait forever for that render to complete if it accidentally triggers again. Alright, so this time we'll have the global illumination enabled. Uh, let's make sure we have uh, the sky we want. And I don't know which one we want here. We'll just try something and see if that's uh, acceptable. Uh, let's say we have a little bit of uh, moving to the other side here. And we probably, I want to be placed somewhere where I can see what's in that water. So I need to look down a little bit need to change the angle of the white here to still see the horizon to some extent and then change let's see multi-frequency uh, change a couple of these things here uh, these waves are perhaps a little bit too intense let's give it seven there you go now we're starting to see also if we increase the illumination level uh, and uh, one more thing which is to change the position of the world the elevation right move the world that way we can see uh, perhaps where that green part is showing. Now maybe it's not deep enough or too deep so we may also need to scale it and that's this button here. Scale the world with the left button allows you to scale it or flatten it and so if we have that type of layout we want let's go bring it up a little bit and that's where you get to to see some beautiful uh, Turkish bluish colors and still get some reflection in addition to the refraction uh, let's see perhaps we can now zoom in a little bit and uh, this is going to be animated so I'm gonna have to set some keyframes I'm gonna clear my prior keyframes and uh, go to the first frame say that's here then I'm gonna go to uh, about not the, the end of the animation I want to move around a little bit but then at the end I want to kind of stay where it is and just see what the uh, what the the waves motion is gonna be in fact I'm gonna just move or turn around this so I'm gonna go over here and then move so it looks I'm still looking at the same uh, pool here the same puddle of water right and then I'm gonna keyframe that 
And then that's it. The rest I don't need to move, so I'm going to just leave it alone. I could actually move to that last position and set a keyframe there too. Eh, why not? I'm not going to do anything. Uh, what I want to do is is really uh, render this uh, in such a way that it's uh, I'm moving around it, and I can actually preview it here and do a test render to see if that's nice position. And uh, pretty much ready. I'm going to perhaps need a little bit more noise. Let's give it uh, 007, something like this. There you go, a little bit more disruption. And uh, let's do one rendering at almost uh, final quality. You can see it's multiple passes. There is uh, there's one, two, three, four, there's six passes that's that this here. If I don't do the multi-frequency, it's going to be, the waves are going to be more distinct, perhaps easier to see. Uh, let's keep that, let's use that. And perhaps even slightly more windy, so higher wave height. Uh, let's give it nine. And we get to see a bit more of this. Um, sky reflecting here. So I will think I'll go with that. I'll increase, I'll decrease the terrain detail, the ray steps a little bit smaller so that we actually get to see even more fine detail on the rocks. Uh, and then we'll also do uh, anti-aliasing steps a little bit higher so it's better quality, less grainy, uh, perhaps 22 and do that. And so now we get an idea of how long it's going to take to do the render. It's going to be 22 passes, and uh, when we're ready, we can, uh, I think it's still doing this right now. Uh, as soon as we have the feedback on the interface, we know we'll be ready. Oh no, I <laughs> I misstepped here. I typed 226 instead of 22. Okay, that happens very rarely, but it will happen, so you got to be careful. Um, don't go as fast as I did here. Anti-aliasing steps, I had 226, and I did an interactive move on that uh, control. It actually got two mouse moves, so it's going to do two renderings. Uh, that's that's uh, the price you pay for going too fast. All right, so let's wait just uh, a few more seconds, and um, right, that will definitely go into one of the funny notes here. So. <coughs> um, Soon we should have the, the update available again here, the, the feedback, and that means it's ready. There you go. So I'm going to change that. I don't want 226 uh, rendering passes, but you notice it actually went pretty quickly for this particular scene. I'm going to go 33 passes, right? And then <coughs> animate this at the current settings. No need to change it any further and render. All right, so now we are doing this job of rendering frame by frame. Uh, 33 passes for each frame and uh, building. Now you notice it actually rendered the first frame twice. I'm not sure if that's a bug, a glitch, or just something to notice. Uh, there may be a good reason for it, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, once it's done with that, it'll go through the remaining frames one by one and there is a movement in both the camera but also in this case on the water plane. The waves are dancing and changing constantly how much light is being reflected, how much sky is being shown, and that sort of things. Alright, well, so thanks for watching. This has been a very long tutorial. Um, uh, we'll, we'll probably do a bit more of a close-up look at some of the very specific details we've seen here, because sometimes we'll see something interesting on top of it, and something, you know, that we may have uh, uh, wondered after we play with it for a little while. All right, so for now, uh, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon again in another tutorial.